close your eyes. Four days. Four days. Four days. Engine arm is out Okay, I'm gonna get the pro. 99, proceeded. Three, two, one. Ignition. Right that way, Houston. That's your grid. Ag side. Good shoulder. I tell you, you have good thrust. Okay, 30 seconds. 308, your number. Okay, coming through 1500 feet. And H dot looks good. Close your eyes. This world is not what you think it is. This world is not what you think it is. Go, go. There's a law called the inverse square law of light. Did you learn that in school? They don't teach this stuff. So the inverse square law of light says when you have a light, a bright at a certain brightness and you half the distance to that light, it's four times brighter. Then you half that distance, it's four times brighter again. So if the moon is 238,000 miles away and let's just say it's one lumen, one. Okay, one lumen. I don't think you could read by one lumen. It's probably more like 50 lumens or whatever. But let's just say it's one lumen just to give the ball the benefit of the doubt. Mm. And you half your way to the moon. Now it's four lumens. Then you half that distance again. It's 16 lumens. And you half that again. It's 64 lumens. You know, you keep doing that until you're 100 miles from the moon. And I forget the number exactly, but it's like 900 million lumens or whatever. It's brighter than the sun. Right? Right. That's not the case. We, we took these rockets to the moon. These guys went there on these untested lunar landers, played golf, drove around in dune buggies, and uh, hammered a flag in the ground. They filmed it, and it wasn't brighter than your backyard on a, on a cloudy afternoon right. or, or sun, yeah, whatever. It's not like that. So just using actual science will prove that what we're showing about the moon is not that. Okay, let's have fun with the moon again. And uh, let's do the inverse square law and make it real easy to understand. Have you ever walked around in the dark with a torch and discovered that if you shine the torch close to your feet, the ground appears quite bright. But as soon as you shine your torch at a further distance, the amount of light that you get is significantly less. Here's a simple studio light to give you an idea. So here's a diagram. Now, if you look at a diagram at, at two feet, like double the distance, you lose 75% of your intensity, your luminosity. And when you go 10 feet, you lose 99% of its luminosity. So light diminishes pretty quickly. So here we are on a full moon, and uh, look how bright that thing is. Now, I'm between bushes, so no other light from the area can shine in, just the moonlight. Now we're going to be using foot candles, so I'm trying to try to do this uh, film and uh, hold the light meter and chew gum at the same time. Okay, here we are, 0 0.02, 0 0.02. So for fun, I looked it up, and I have the same number as the Meteorological Society. Okay, so let's set up our scale again, and uh, right here we're going to put 0 0.02 because that's uh, the light of the moon on Earth, and then our moon, we're gonna set it up here, and then we don't know the brightness of the moon, so we're gonna to have to set up some kind of baseline to figure it out. However, we do know the alleged distance to the moon, which is around 1.2 billion feet, and the, uh, the diameter, which is uh, a little over 2,000 miles. So we're gonna set up our baseline, so we got a real bright light downrange, and we're gonna get it to uh, 0 0.02, so we're getting close here. So I'm gonna move up a little bit more, and we got 0 0.02. Okay, let's see how many feet we are from the light. We have a tape measure down here. It's pitch black out here. <laughs> All right, so if I can read it, uh, 167 and a half. So, and it's a little bit left of that, so we're gonna call it 168. So our light is uh, 168 feet away, and it gives off 0.02 lumens, just like the moon.
Okay, let's have a little fun with the inverse square law so you can see that it works. Okay, so let's cruise up towards our light here. And I put two blocks of wood on the ground. Now you can pick any two distances you want. In this case, I'm just taking a number and then divide it in half. So you're gonna divide it by two. So you divide it by two and then you square it. So two times two is four. So we're gonna look at these two numbers here and we're gonna divide it by two and then we're gonna square it. So two times two is four. Four times whatever this number is. So let's take a look. Okay, we're at 33 feet and we got 2.49. Okay, so we're going to times that by 4. And then we're going to cruise up. Now we're going to go half the distance. Divide the distance by 2, which is 16 and a half feet. I guess I'm going to have to show it to you here, 16 and a half feet. You can see how it lines up with a piece of wood. Okay, so uh, this should be around 10. Let's see what it is. 9.94. Pretty awesome. Okay, now let's see how bright the bulb is. So now, uh, I, I, it, it's so bright that it killed the meter. So let me try to get it closer here and take a look at it. So, as you can see, you've got 36, 35. Um, let me try it again. We got, uh, <laughs> it's hard to see it, 30, 29, and then 31, 33. 3,600. Now remember, these are foot candles, so you have to times it by 10.7 to get lumens. The factory specs on this light bulb is 36,000 lumens. So that's equivalent to about 3,400 foot candles. So you can see, like, we're right in there. So let's use uh, the factory spec at 36,000 lumens. So let's go back over here at 168 feet at 0 0.02 lumens. Now what happens if we add a light? Uh, so we're gonna double the light, so we gotta square that. So you got two times two is four. Now four times 0 0.02 would be 0 0.08. So let's see what we get. Okay, we added another light, and let's see what we got. <laughs> 0 0.07. Pretty close, not bad, should be 0 0.08. Okay, so what if we put three lights down there? So we're going to be adding two more. So we're going to triple the power. Now we want to square that. So three times three is nine. Nine times 0 0.02 is 0 0.18. So we should have 0.18. There's three lights down there. And uh, let's see what we have now. 18. Right on the money. Wow. Okay, so uh, obviously the inverse square law works. So we go back to our scale. And now we're gonna use uh, 36,000 lumens. But first we have to divide the distance by 168 feet. And then we're gonna square it. So the moon is 238,000 miles away. We're gonna times it by 5,280. And we're gonna get uh, 1.2 billion feet. Now we're gonna divide that by uh, 168 feet. So we got 7 million, 7.4 million. Now we got to square that, so we're going to times it by itself. 748000. Okay, so this is what it is squared. 55 quadrillion. Now we're going to take that and times it by the lumens. 36,000 lumens. So it's, the moon is two quadrillion or quintillion or gazillion uh, lumens. The moon is two quintillion lumens. Let's look at it in another way. Let's take the surface area of the moon and turn it into square feet. First, let's drop our number into our super big calculator so we don't lose it. So the way you figure out the surface area of a sphere, it's pretty easy, easier than I thought anyway. It's uh, four times pi r squared. So now let's figure out the surface area of the moon in square feet. So we have the radius right here. We're now 1078. Now we're gonna, that's miles. So we're going to times it by 5,280, and this is going to be feet. So now we got to square that radius times radius squared. Uh, five six nine one eight forty. So that's the radius squared. So now we're going to times it by four, and then we're going to times it by pi. 
3.1415. So that's our total square footage, surface area of the moon in square footage, in square feet. So now uh, that's the whole moon. So now we got to divide it in half because you can only you're only gonna be looking at half the moon. Divided by two. Here's our number. This is a uh, square footage of half the moon. We'll copy it. We're back to our big calculator. Now the top is the top number. We put it back in. That's how many lumens the moon is. Now we're going to divide it by the square feet of half the moon. Paste it. Here's our divide button right here. So it's a uh, nine eight nine five. Uh, 10, 000, almost almost 10,000 uh, lumens per square foot. That's a lot of light. So let me show you how bright that is. So let's go back to our three light setup right here. Now those three lights have 100,000 lumens. So let's put a 10 by 10 box around them, which is easy to figure out because the garage door behind it is 10 by 12. So 10 by 10 is 100, 100 square feet. So each square foot is 10,000 lumens. On the moon, so a hundred times ten thousand is a million. So that red, every ten, every ten by ten square like that would have a million million lumens in it. Crazy bright. Five times brighter than this. I got this moon landing photo right from NASA. Let's rough in these ten by ten squares, and each one of these squares would have one million lumens. This small area would be millions of lumens bright. Does the moon landing look like this? <laughs> okay, cut. Wow. Neil, so glad I caught you. I'm the head engineer on the Apollo mission. Uh, we did the calculations on the moon, and it's so bright. If you try to go up there with you and your men, you'll burn the eyes out of your head. Hey, and uh, with all the uh, solar winds. <laughs> I'm gonna go with, let's take it a little farther. Here's my mock-up moon, a couple different colors. Okay, let's set up our moon here and shine a light on it. Okay, now you see how there's a little shiny spot in the middle? Uh, now let's compare it to the real moon. The, uh, the real moon is it lit evenly all the way across. Even the edges look a little more, have more luminosity than the middle. So. That doesn't make any sense right there. Now, either maybe the moon's not a sphere, maybe the moon's flat, or is it possible the moon is giving off its own light? I say this because the sun is supposedly shining on the moon and reflecting back to the earth. Let's compare these two. On the left side, I have a regular light. On the right side is uh, our mock-up moon, and I have a really bright light shining on it. Notice the... Uh, the uh, shiny spot in the middle of it. Now the one on the left, you can see it's a light. It gives off shimmers. The one on the right, it's you can tell it's just an object that's being lit up by another light. So it really doesn't match. Now watch the moon compared to a light. <laughs> they both look very close. They both give off shimmers. You can tell it's an actual light, the moon. You can see that you're not looking at a dirty, dusty ball being lit up by the sun. I think the moon is not what you've been told. And I think we pretty much crushed the moon landing. <laughs> hey, John, while you're sampling there, you might look around and see if you see any vesicular basalt. That's what I'm looking for. Good show. I told him you were. Whoop! Okay. We see that one went all the way in. Not quite. But there it is. All but about uh, five inches. Okay. And it was, that one was smooth. Okay, and John, uh, stand by for a feed water tone. It's got it. How's that? 